In the 1980s, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ruled the world. Turn on the TV, turtles. Go to the movies, turtles. Go to the store, turtles. Go out to eat, turtles. Take the family to a nice musical, turtles. Turtles were literally everywhere. And for good reason. The show and the movies were phenomenal and the toy line was literally the greatest thing a 6 to 10 year old kid could ever hope for. You'd see a new episode on TV and a new villain and BAM! There it was the next day at the store. They were pumping out characters and lore faster than any show at the time. Probably just to sell more toys and make more money, but that didn't matter because they were awesome. You had Crane, Baxter Stockman, Leatherhead, General Track, Muckman, Mutagen Man, and what seemed like hundreds more. So naturally, when the NES game came out, we were all expecting these guys. What? Fans were confused to say the least when this game came out. Yes, there were some familiar enemies in the game like Bebop, Rocksteady, Foot Soldiers, and of course the Shredder, but the vast, vast majority of this game was literally enemies we had never seen or heard of before. Where did they come from? I know some say that since this game was based more off the comics than the TV show, that the enemies all came from there, but that's not really the case either. So many of these enemies were created literally just for this game. Truth be told, when development of this game first started, the TMNT universe wasn't all that developed. There were only about 10 core comics, and the first season of the cartoon was still in development, and there were just prototype of the action figures being created. There was very little source material to go on. Therefore, Konami set forth to create enemies they felt would fit in with the limited universe that they were presented with. If you look at the enemies in the light of some creative freedom, many of them actually fit in quite well with the early, newly developed lore of the TMNT universe. Today, let's look at the Konami-created enemies of the first game and make some sense of their inclusion into this early universe. But before we get into that, welcome to Ogle's channel. Thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't clicked that subscribe button down below, be sure and do that now for your latest in gaming news, content, reviews, and a few other things that we throw in there from time to time as well. But let's get back to why these Konami created enemies fit in so well with that early Turtles lore. Early on in the game, as you progress in the sewers and the city, you will notice the game has a heavy emphasis on robots, cyborg, and other mutants, all of which were core aspects of the early TMNT universe. Some seem like strange choices, yes, but nearly all of them fit easily into the lore. The first enemy you're likely to encounter is the Robot Fly. Much of the early comics focused on advanced technology. In the second issue of the comics, we have Baxter Stockman creating the Robot Mousers, which create tunnels to rob banks. But we also have instances of them invading the sewers in which the turtles live. While the Robot Flies were never in the comics, it's easy to see where Konami would have gotten their inspiration from. Robot-based animals or insects traveling through the sewer. The game also generally has these flies and mousers in the exact same areas, so it makes logical sense they'd have a similar origin. I like to think the flies had some inspiration from Baxter Stockman being a fly and creating robot flies, but the fly version of Baxter Stockman wasn't even a fault at this point, so that's very unlikely. There's also a chance that the bugs are meant to be the drones that the Shredder sends out to spy on Baxter Stockman's mousers like in the TV show. The designs are a little bit different between the two, However, the show was in development at the same time as this game, and perhaps the artists of the show and the game designers were taking different interpretations of the same script. Either way, this robot fly is not that out of place in this game. Next up are the Fire Freaks. Now we do have some information about them in a manual. It says, an ex-pyromaniac from Brooklyn, this hot dog takes careful aim before launching fireballs that turn into clones of himself. Now it would seem like this fellow was a human and got mutated into an ever-burning fire. This type of environmental mutation wasn't really a thing when the game came out in either the comics or in the show. We had in a TV show how Bebop and Rocksteady were both humans turned into mutant animals by Shredder, so this is probably the closest type of origin that we're going to have for the Fire Freak. A probable villain in his local neighborhood who agreed to some sort of mutation experiment by the Shredder. The game developers probably read in the early show how Shredder could mutate people and just took liberties from there. Later on in the show we do see environmental mutations like Muckman, so as the years went by, this particular enemy in the game actually does make even more sense. Chainsaw Maniac. According to what the game guide calls him that is, I think I can pinpoint pretty well how they came up with this villain in the game. In the comics, there was a side character named Casey Jones who helped the turtles from time to time. He wasn't a major player in the issues available to the game creators at the time, but he had a striking resemblance to the horror movie character Jason Voorhees with that hockey mask. 
I would wager money that the game developers just took a similar path and decided to create an enemy in the game based on another 80s horror character. Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He even looks like he has a leather mask on. They probably thought it'd fit well with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle universe because of what the writers had done with Jason and Casey. The next enemy was also given a name in the game guide, Giant Frog. I think there's a dual origin for this enemy. First is the obvious one. The game developers were creating a game of mutant amphibians, so why wouldn't adding another one in just make sense? The show that was in development was creating more mutant enemies with Bebop and Rocksteady. The comics had alien mutants with the Triceratons. Why not expand the universe a bit more with mutant frogs? Second, look at that head. There is no way that they didn't base him on E.T. to some degree. Which makes sense since about half of the first 10 comics dealt with alien nations. I'm sure the creators thought that an alien look would fit in perfectly with that lore. Whichever direction they chose on this frog, it makes complete sense according to what they had to go on at the time. The Bomb Droppers. I don't think this enemy is a stretch at all for the game. It's basically just a hot air balloon created by the Foot Clan to drop bombs on the turtles. It even has their emblem and everything on there. No, it wasn't in the show and it wasn't in the comics, but it just makes total sense for the universe. One that is in the same category that makes less sense though are the Dive Bombers. I would just chalk it up to being a mechanical bomber like the earlier one, but those organic wings make it pretty weird and pretty different. I know that early comics dealt a lot of technology and drones, so this was probably just the game designers taking some unusual liberties in that direction, but it's still sort of an odd one out. The Stick'em Ups or Roof Leapers were always some of the weirdest things to me when I was a kid. This is also their official name according to the manual, which describes them as ignorant to the force of gravity, this pesty sewer thug, the product of a horrible chemical spill, pounces about on ceiling pipes waiting to rain terror from above. I can only imagine that the horrible chemical spill was the very same mutagen that mutated the turtles. The question is, what in the sewer mutated into this? Maybe some sort of fungus or bacteria? It's tough to say, but having the backstory to some degree gives us some idea of what the developers were thinking about when they created it. If it didn't have that backstory in the manual, I probably would have put more emphasis on it hearkening to being an alien creature because early comics deal with the aliens being on Earth known as the Utrams and has the same coloring as the most famous Utram, Crane. However, the manual sort of disproves that and we'll have to assume that it's from the spill. The next enemy I always thought was the Rat King from the show when I was a kid. He didn't get introduced into the show though until the third season, so after this game came out. However, he was introduced in the side comic, Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in early of 1988 when this game was still in fairly early development. The game never says he's the Rat King, but I tend to think based upon the areas that he's located in and also based upon the coloring of his costume that this enemy at least took inspiration from the Rat King in the comics. In the same area where what I call the Rat King is located, we also come across the first main crop of drones in this game. The first are the Mosquito Drones. I'd put them in a similar category as the Robot Flies. While not appearing in the sewer, I'm sure when the creators of the game were thinking of enemies and they created the first flies, they made a secondary design which appears here. We also get a true robot drone that shoots lasers in this area. In the comics, it was an ordinary sight to see robots and drones firing away at the turtles all the way back to when they first encountered the Utrams in issue number 4. Granted, this particular drone wasn't in the comics. Given the artistic freedom, I'm sure the designers of the game felt comfortable imagining a drone like this would fit right in. And while we're talking of early drones in the game, let's go ahead and mention what I always thought was a floating crab growing up. The orange drone here. Similar to the other drones, it never appeared in the comics or the show. However, like I said earlier, the creators of the game knew robots, androids, cyborgs, and drones were all part of the early TMNT universe, so it's easy to see why they took their own liberties in including them in the game as well. The next guys I'm going to call Rock Lords because every time I saw them growing up, they made me think of the action figures that I had that transformed into rocks that were called Rock Lords, which relates back to this game in two separate ways. First off, the cartoon did have rock soldiers in the first season, which as we mentioned was in development at the same time as this game. It's easy to see how their interpretation of what rock soldiers meant could have been different from the TV show and they created these guys instead especially if they just looked at the 80s culture dealing with the rock soldiers and action figures at the time. In the same vein as the rock lords here were the splitting rock lords. Very similar in appearance to the first ones, but when you hit them, they break into smaller rock men. Just like when you break a regular rock, it breaks into smaller rocks. Once again, it's easy to see that these guys were probably based off the rock soldiers from the TV series, 
they're just simply taken in a different direction since they didn't know exactly how the TV show was going to design them. The Alien Flea Astronaut, or at least what I call this little creature here. His inclusion could go back to the earlier explanation of robot insects not being that out of place in the early TMNT universe at all. But I think the story of this little guy has to relate more to the outer space adventures that the turtles had in issues 5, 6, 7 of the comics. It looks way too much like an astronaut suit not to. In nearly one third of the source material that the game developers had, the turtles were traveling with Fugitoid to a few different alien worlds while trying to escape the Triceratons, and it's easy to imagine how this guy could have existed in that world. The next enemy is just called Robo according to the game guides. The imagery for this guy reminds me greatly of the Utroms and their android suits from the TMNT comics. Robos are clearly robots, but once you kill them, the head flies off like a spaceship hitting everything in his path. The Utrams generally housed themselves in the stomach of their suits, but the game designers could have easily moved this to the head and pictured when the body is destroyed, they tried to escape like an escape pod flying off. That's just my personal thoughts on it. However, at the very least, it's just simply another drone which clearly fit in well with the universe. Once again, the TMNT universe was so small at this point, the designers of the game were taking the small amount of information they had and tried to create a game with enemies that could theoretically fit into that universe. The good old eyeball spider. I wish they'd given some background to this guy in the manual because he is one of the most unexplained creatures in this game. Could it be a chemical mutant like the roof leapers? Possibly, but a mutant what? A plant? Why did it just grow one giant eyeball? Let's try to see what the developers are thinking though, and this one is a little bit of a stretch. The eyeball is perhaps alluding to the eyeball of the Technodrome, and they decided to take that imagery and just create a mutant plant out of that. Or perhaps they envisioned it being part of the alien worlds that the turtles were traveling to. I mean, there was a full cast of strange aliens they encountered, so why not create a weird little one like this? You could make it fit into either of these, and perhaps that's what the developers were thinking, but this is one of the more mysterious ones to me in the game, especially since it appears in the areas of the game where there are very few alien creatures, and we're going to be coming to those areas in just a few minutes. The next one, the manual did help us out a little bit. The Mecha Turtle. It says, appearing like your average turtle, this level 3 commander will show his true colors if you do him any harm. This clearly brings up memories of Metalhead from the show, but once again, there is no way that that was even a concept at the creation of this game. What we do know about the TMNT universe at this time though, is that the Utrams were capable of creating androids that could blend in with the humans flawlessly. It's just as easy to assume they could have created a turtle android to blend in with the turtles flawlessly as well. Once hit enough though, the mirage, no pun intended, would wear off and his true robotic form would be exposed. But this may be overthinking the designer's influence. It could just as easily be they were following the trend at the time of creating a clone of the hero for you to fight against like in Zelda 2, which they borrowed heavily from in other gameplay aspects, so why not this one? Either way, the robotic side of things would fit perfectly into the early comic universe. The enemies begin to transition in the game from robotic to alien as you get out of the main city and begin making your way to Shredder's base, the Technodrome, that's located underneath the Earth's surface. More than likely, the game designers are mixing the alien planets of the comics and Dimension X of the upcoming TV show. For example, Krang was a Utron from Dimension X in the show, but in the early comics, Utrons were just alien creatures from another planet with Dimension X never being mentioned. The show that was in development was opening the idea that the Technodrome would be associated with the alien beings that the comics had focused on, and the creators of this game clearly took that direction as well. So as you travel to the Technodrome, you encounter several alien creatures to make perfect sense for being in that part of the game. In this area, we are treated to what looks like an alien porcupine, a human-sized spider, a mix of the earlier flea with a head from the movie Alien, and an alien jellyfish straight out of Metroid. They knew from living in the 80s how to make something look like an alien, and they did it perfectly. Now, they could have leaned a bit more on the actual alien creatures in the comics, but what they made got the alien point across just fine. Growing up, I always wondered where this alien stuff came from, but having never read the comics when I was younger, I never realized how much of the earlier turtles took place in these alien worlds. And I guess technically the alien jellyfish was in the comics. When you make your way into the Technodrome, the enemies naturally become more mechanical yet again. Krang, the most famous Utrom from the show, is essentially the leader of the Technodrome, and the Utroms being so technologically advanced, it's no wonder that nearly every enemy in the Technodrome is of robotic nature. 
First, we have the robot astronauts. This makes perfect sense to include the astronauts here because like I mentioned earlier, the TMNT universe is remixing Dimension X and the Technodrome of the show with the alien beings of the comics. In the alien worlds, the Triceratons actually had flying astronaut suits very similar to these and that has to be where the game creators got the idea. The next enemy that you encounter is probably the most ordinary looking drone imaginable, but then you get to move on to the kangaroo drone. Between the robotic fleas and the kangaroo drones of this game, they really wanted to nail down that enemy jumping ability for some reason. Hard to say why they chose a kangaroo design, literally nothing from the show or the comics reference this in any way. However, being a drone, it at least makes a small amount of sense for the universe. Toward the end of the final stage, you do begin to see these robo spiders hanging on the wall as well. Seems like the creators are just filling the Technodrome with as many robotic creations as they could to help flesh out how technological the world that they were given. Overall, I know this game had a ton of enemies that fans of the comics and especially fans of the show had never seen before. But knowing that the source material was so limited and that the creators had to create their own enemies to flesh out the world explains a lot. The enemies might not be what we are familiar with, but nearly all of them do fit in perfectly with the TMNT universe of the time. But what are your thoughts though? Do you feel like the creators did the best that they could with the given source material? Or could they have created some better enemies that fit in with the universe? Let me know in the comments down below. But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, go out there, find a great game to play, and just simply have a great rest of the day.